Hey, what's up everyone? So the 64th opening that I'd like to share with you is called Crane. So Crane as in the type of bird. So yeah, given that it's an animal name again, it's probably coming from the Japanese. So this is a opening that is uh, a variation from black very early on. And I would put this as something really similar to Aubrey uh, opening as white. In a sense that the key parts of this opening is about, you know, limiting excess and potentially going to the edge pretty early on. So let's run through the, the first initial part of the sequence where the opening kick starts. Um, basically F5, D6, C5, which is the usual cut to the rose group of openings followed by f4 and then instead of playing e3 which goes into rows and you know all the standard openings in that branch d3 is horse f3 is uh, basically deer so over here um, instead of all those three options we actually jump into d7 uh, d7 basically kick starts the crane opening before we go into d7 just wanted to quickly cover about e7 so this is an interesting uh, probably easter egg uh, bonus surprise uh, wipeout opening in case uh, you guys haven't seen this if you play e7 basically if white regroups to f6 and you go g5 which which is very unorthodox <laughs> if white goes into e6 you basically uh, do a quick wipeout plus 64 move to e3. That's a wipeout opening, essentially. So let's just move back. That's just a side track. So let's go back to d7. So this basically kickstarts the crane opening. So the special thing about the crane opening is that it, it's fairly counterintuitive to, to play against. So assuming if uh, white were to continue on with the best move over here to just kind of form a compact shape, you would then play d3. So this is kind of like a standard sequence. So thereafter, it's it's fairly difficult for, for white to kind of keep up with you know how the opening progresses. So if you if white were to play c7, you then kind of regroup and basically you just try to kind of bring your opponent to the left as much as possible. So usually d2 is not a move that people typically consider, considering that you're flipping two discs and at the same time, uh, you know, there are options over here to flip one disc instead. So typically you would probably see like maybe C3 being played and then you would just continue to go to the left by just taking B3. And again, you know, if your opponent takes something like say D2, you just play to the edge. So this opening is very much like uh, Aubrey, uh, in many ways as white so I would say that this is kind of like a black opening of uh, Aubrey perhaps so it's just basically about creating a shape and bringing your opponent as much to one side of the board as possible it's almost like you know you're, you're trying to pull your opponent to one side of the board as much as possible so if white goes into b6 you basically centralize or you could go to the H, either one is playable. So let's say if you go to the H, then white is given a chance to kind of regroup over here. But if you were to go into the center, and if white continues to go down this route, you can continue to pull him to the H, and you realize it's actually getting quite favorable for black. So it's something that is counterintuitive for white uh, to some extent, because this regrouping probably gives black a very easy line control. So what I mean by line control is just controlling this C5, C6, C7, 3 this uh, column over here, which forms a line. So typically, it's very counterintuitive to want to play E6 and give that up to your opponent. So I would say that, you know, this kind of limits options for white, and also it's very counterintuitive. Uh, I've seen the top online Blitz player play this pretty often, but it's extremely difficult and very hard to kind of uh, play out. And you basically give up an early disadvantage at the same time, and it's very difficult to chase the lead if your opponent knows how to counter it. So I would recommend this for advanced players and above. You can go ahead and give it a shot. I would say that you know if you know this opening very well and your opponent doesn't know it, you could end up with a huge win. But of course, if your opponent knows it, then it becomes very fairly challenging to play. So this is one opening to, to keep in mind, perhaps, if you wanted to play a variation, maybe use it in Blitz. 
So thank you very much for joining me in this opening video and I hope you enjoyed this uh, opening video and yeah, do, do go, go ahead and give it a try. I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye. Thank you.